What's up, everybody? My name is Brad Gilmore. You might know me as the boat. Oh my God, you're my dream boat. For sure. uh, Brad, you're yeah, uh, you're not on camera. Huh? Your camera's not on. Are you okay? Oh, it's not on. No. Oh, okay. Well, what's hey everyone? Deal? I'm Jen Sturger, and I can't seem to get Brad's camera to work for some reason. Uh, because in case you're just coming in to see what's going on on coming up next, a few weeks ago, Brad lost a bet to me because he bet on the Astros against my Rays. And how'd that work out for you, Brad? Um, you know, we didn't win, and and y'all didn't win the World Series. But continue. Uh, that's fine. But to be fair, I won this bet and you did not keep your word last week. And a lot of people were very upset. People wrote Christian and they said that you did not keep your word. So, uh, we got a little talking to, didn't we? Uh, I mean, you could say that you could <laughs> say that now I will say this. I am as it currently, as I'm currently sitting, I am living up to my end of the bargain. I am dressed as Jessica, and um, and so I've lived up to the end of the bet. No, it's not because the whole thing, the whole point was we had to see you. Well, I mean, I can see me. I mean, I, I no one ever really Brad, said you had to. You had to look at me, Brad. Let me put it to you this way. What's that? There's a lot of stuff going on in our country right now. Okay, there's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of anxiety, and I think. The people need to see Brad Gilmore as Jessica at this point. You know, I mean, screw the people. I think, well, Brad. This isn't a democracy. This is a dictatorship. Brad, <laughs> turn your freaking camera on right now. Y'all want to see Jessica? Yes, we want to see Jessica. Are you sure y'all want to see Jessica? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, is this there is some it. kind of like drum roll or reveal you got Don't for us? Don't be scared now. All right, here we go. <laughs> is everybody ready? Yes. Here's the reveal. <laughs> I look so crazy. I look insane. I'm looking at myself right now, and I look insane. Uh, here we go. In three, two, <laughs> one. You're so pretty. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Is everyone seeing me? I think PLD's on the screen right uh, now. Does PLD, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. One second, one second. They should be able to oh see you God. in one minute. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Can they see me? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Ah! Sorry, oh, y'all. RB3, you're killing me here. Yeah, I know. This reveal, me. this reveal, oh, my gosh. Uh, subscribe we're going to make you twerp to WAP in, in the next one if you keep what? this up. No, we're going to. Oh. <laughs> no, RB3. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is, this is on me, y'all. Uh, 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 uh. Here he is. Here he is. Can the people see me? Yep. Oh, they can see you. <laughs> I look like the love child of Jen Sturger and Jason Mewes. <laughs> Your hair is so luscious and your cleavage is a little absentee, but that's fine. <laughs> I really do like that beanie. When you're done with it, can I have it? I will mail this to you. Oh, perfect. Um, I feel, I feel. Pretty? I feel pretty? like an idiot. I feel pretty? like. I, you're so pretty. I, I feel, <laughs> I feel like an, an, an idiot. I wanted to, sh I was going to go and shave the face. You right? should have. And, um, and the reason I didn't is I didn't want any of our uh, male viewership out there questioning themselves. Uh, after, after this episode. <laughs> Oh, but, is there anything coming in from the comment section? Oh, the neckline is just so daring. Yes, yes, thank you. I, you know, it's very deep. As you can see, I've drawn on some of my, um, some of my additions. As no, <laughs> no, no. Let me see. You got to stand up as, a little straighter. I can't. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> as best I can. Sharpie to draw on boobs. What are you doing? You know, doing? I tried my best. <laughs> so. so. <laughs> Uh, DIY is not your thing. Oh, oh my lord! So anyway, welcome to this edition of Coming Up Next. 
I am the boat, Brad Gilmore, joined by the, the lovely Kevin and Miss Jennifer Sturger. Uh, today, you can call me Jessica, at least for the time being. Um, Change your nameplate, I dare you. We'll yes, in the next break. I will try my best. So, uh, anyway, we have a lot to get to on the show today. I hope everyone's happy with living up to my bet. But if you do all remember, if you do all remember, if you all do remember... Uh, at the conclusion of said show, Miss Jennifer Sturger will do her best cosplay as the boat Brad Gilmore. If you remember the the vote totals coming in from the state of Michigan, they they dictated that you do this. So that's where we will Jeremiah be here in Morris a little while. Donated twenty dollars. Brad Thank or you, Jessica, Jeremiah. this made my week. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it's doing something for somebody <laughs> because you do look like you're like smoochy mooches. <laughs> oh my God, Brad. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I will fulfill my end of the bargain. I'm actually going to do it while we're talking. I'm actually going to be doing my whole situation. So you guys are going to actually get to see the transformation happen or at least parts of it. That's how well, easy it is. Can, to can, do. At least can I get some thumbs up in the, uh, uh, on the like in the video can we like the video, subscribe to the channel, share, do all the things? <laughs> I don't know. So look, here's something funny. I don't know if you can see, like, there's a Did pinkish. Did you put blush on? You do look a little blushy. So yeah, there's a pinkish hue on the back of my hand from trying to apply <laughs> lipstick and then really AJ saying Lancaster I cannot do this. Twenty dollars. Jessica looks like James Franco in Spring Breakers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel too. <laughs> That's how I feel. So <laughs> we're not we going to be able to get, get to. anything done today. But okay, let's get let's get this started. We do have a show to get to, so this is coming up next. We're going to start off <coughs> hot. Uh, if we haven't already enough with my uh, looks right now, uh, we're going to start with rapid fire. And Jen, last week we saw the horror free for all. We both made bold predictions. My prediction was that William the Beast Bibiani was going to enter... Or am I right? reading the right thing? Uh, we both made bold predictions about William the Beast Bibiani um, uh, being in the free-for-all, winning the free-for-all. I said that he would win it. You thought that we would actually see Clark Wolf in it. We were both wrong. William oh. the Beast Bibiani was not even in the horror free-for-all. So my question to start us out, was it a mistake that Bibbs was left out of the horror free-for-all? Absolutely. Like, I don't think you can have a horror free for all without having people like Clark Wolf and Bibiani in it. I'm sorry. Like, they're two of those competitors that you know when they spin that on the wheel that you are pretty much done for. Brad, stop it. You're really <laughs> distracting. <laughs> you know you're you know you're done for when they hit those on the wheel. So I feel like having people that you know are just like lights out in this category, not be a part of this is just a detriment <laughs> to the entire free-for-all. You can't call someone the champion of the horror free-for-all without having those two names in it, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, what do y'all think? Oh, um, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I think that, I think that William the Beast Bibiani needed to be in this thing. I, I knew that, I knew that Clark Wolf was most likely not going to be because she's retired. It was a faction thing. You know what I mean? How do y'all do this, by the way, with all the hair, all the accoutrements, all the mm. stuff it's on the a face? Lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I have a newfound respect. I'll be honest with you. I have a newfound respect, um, for everybody. However, uh, let me get back into my pose. Um, I think William Bibiani should have been in it because, like you said, it's always lights out when he gets on there, but maybe that was the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're enjoying the hair tossing a little too much. I, I think I've always wanted to toss my hair and wasn't aware of it. Um, I, th I think Bibiani not being in there might have been for the betterment of the whole thing because he's been – stop. He's been – the uh, horror, he's been the free for all MVP for two years in a row and in a category that is a specialty of his. It's almost a guaranteed win for Bibbs. So I think the powers that be thought, you know, we should potentially have somebody else, a new face who could go out there and win the whole damn thing. And that's what we saw with Adam Collins. However, I still think that it would have been fun to have him in it. But now, and PLD, I'm going to throw to you. PLD was informing me of a gauntlet that was being thrown down in the yes. uh, on Twitter. And PLD, why don't you let the people know exactly what that was? 
Yeah, Bibbs uh, basically stated that he would have won the free-for-all. He scored himself, and uh, he challenged Mr. Collins to uh, what he calls an Iron Maiden match, which is Oof. basically an Iron Man match of horror. Uh, and then Mr. Collins has said he would accept such a challenge next year after he's done doing the rest of his year. He's got a little match to study for, you know, Shazam uh, against Shazam and against uh, Dan Merle at the end of the year. So yeah, he is a little busy. So I feel like throwing that on his plate probably wouldn't be the best decision. So I think he's smart to defer to next season. But I am really, really excited to see that match and see what comes out. I mean, like, look, Adam Collins is just kind of taking the entire league by storm. It was one of those picks in the beginning where everybody was like, Shannon Barney, what are you doing? Corruption doesn't have a chance. And now all of a sudden, we are on the edge of our seats. Yeah, I mean, Adam Collins, to me, not only is he the rookie of the year by far, he's uh, he's making a strong case for overall player of the year. He won the singles tournament. He's won a free-for-all. He's in a team's tournament now. If he can beat the man that they know as Dan Merle, <laughs> come, come spectacular. You know, uh, I really also have to say... <laughs> like you're starting to feel yourself now there's a lot more like hair tossing and like twirling and like so i, I don't know why you think i do this a lot but okay <laughs> i also have to say i'm very impressed by the eyebrow uh thing that y'all do you know i looked into the eyebrows the eyebrows this is a whole nother thing i've never even discovered or thought about you know what i mean and, there, and I was asking the float, you know, what all do y'all do to the eyebrows? She's like, we have pencils that you have to sharpen and stuff like that. Some people tattoo eyebrows in. No, that's a bad, that's a bad, that's a bad out. look. I've never seen someone get their eye, eyebrows tattooed where I wasn't like, why do you look so angry? Don't do it, ladies. It's just not, it's not a wise decision. I understand the whole, like, not wanting to draw them on. But it just looks so unnatural. For the love of God, this trend needs to go away. No, no, no. You never show the hairline with the beanie. I'm sorry. You don't. Oh, do I was that. just suggesting it. It felt okay. like it was falling. Okay. It felt like it was falling. Sure. Um. Anyway, <laughs> are your eyebrows AJ real? Lancaster donated twenty dollars. It's like I'm looking at a bass player from mid two thousands Christian rock band. <laughs> He's like, with arms wide open. Yeah, I feel like I should be in Creed right now. Can you take me, me higher? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to the next rapid fire question so I can get this ridi <laughs> ridiculous garb off. Um, okay, Jen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shake on this core. I Donated twenty dollars. Why is it breaking up? Because I'm that good looking. I don't know if the smoke back can handle. I don't know if the smoke back <laughs> can handle all this right now. Let me give it a second. I'll refresh. I'll refresh. Oh, oh okay. boy, and see what's going on. But hey, okay, thank you. Anyways, yeah. continue. I'm, com man. I'm completely lost as to what I'm supposed to be doing. What is the best match that people don't talk enough about, Jen Sturgeon? Oh wow. I, when I think of the best match that people don't talk about, it's not necessarily a title match or a number one contender match because those, I feel like, they get enough attention as it is. It's one of those those gems. And maybe it's a little bit of recency bias for me. But I feel like there have been so many Stacey Howard upsets mm. that she any match with Stacey Howard, specifically the one against Eric Zipper, I feel like, that was the match that I feel like sticks out in my brain as one of those wow matches. One of those matches that when you were standing in the studio, you were just like, holy crap, I can't believe she made that pull. Will she do it again? Of course she does. She's Stacey Howard. And that's one of those matches that I just feel like people just don't give her enough credit because they just don't think that she's a serious competitor in terms of her preparation for the game. Um, you know what? Stacey Howard's always a good option. The one that I always go with when people ask me this question, and I think it will forever be the one that I remember, was it was the first taping that I had ever gone to. And uh, let me talk like this now. Look, you always first. remember your first because my first, I feel like that's a little, that's a little bias of an mm -hmm. answer. But I remember when I went to my first, it was team action versus late to the party. And I will always remember that. Yeah, but mine was actually a good match. My, <laughs> <laughs> mine mine so was team top 10 versus team top that. And at the time, top 10 set the all-time 
points record for teams. And it was one of those matches that was really competitive all the way up until the end. And when they got into the second round, Jim Vavita made the terrible mistake of giving John Roca biopics, which is one of his big strengths at the time. And it shifted the entire game. I remember beforehand, I asked Roca, you know, hey, cowboy, how you feeling? (laughs) And he said, well, little lady, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I think we're going to think we're going to lose this one. I said, you just do you, John Roca. And uh, he went out there and he did it. He did it. And they got the job done. And uh, that's why I always think that that's the match that people never talk about. But it showed, one, how important the strategy of the game is. And two, the undying spirit that is the outlaw. PLD, do you have one for this one? Yeah, my favorite is a little bit biased as well. Team action versus top 10 one. That time where Matt Eisman on the oh, desk. Yeah. Team action announced themselves, kind of knocked them in the face a little bit. And uh, my favorite quote from Andrew Guy was when somebody's saying John Roca, so they were getting in Roca's head, Roca protested. And then Drew just said, Yeah, scoreboard's getting in your head. And it was just that me dead. Love that match. Yes. Yeah, that w- that one was a good one. Uh, and and the trash talk between Roca and Guy and Bateman was was pretty le- and and uh and uh, uh uh Matt Nost. I was about to say Matt Atchity, Matt Nost. We're always, they were always really fun. They were always really fun. So, next question in rapid fire. And I promise now we're getting into the groove of this show. I think everyone was a little bit distracted for obvious reasons. But, 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 but what was the greatest JTE mince pronunciation of all time? Jen Sturgeon. Oh, no. You know, there's just been... I think I always go back to the live event when he was like, Elijah Dishku. <laughs> I even, I don't even know if I mispronounced his mispronunciation right. It was just so out there where we're like, uh, judges? Yeah. Yeah. And what did he say uh, in the horror free fall? He said he mispronounced Evangeline Lilly. How did he say it, PLD? I can't even tell you how he said it. <laughs> it's like a, it sounded like he was referring to a part of the female anatomy when he, when he started talking, you know, Evagiline or something to, to that to that uh, to that nature. But he has had a lot of great ones. For me, his best mispronunciation and rest in peace to the late great in JTE's mind, Chadwick Bo- uh, Chaswick Bosman, Chad Chaswick Bosman, I think is what he said oh, for Chadwick God. Bosman. And uh, th- that one was great. He's always going to be known for more of the misspellings as well with, with Geppetto and things of that nature. But it was, wasn't it great to see Little Evil back, at least for that sh- one shining moment in the free-for-all? I mean, I feel like that's a calling that a shining moment is uh, a little <laughs> deceiving for people. Brad, you have to stop primping yourself. <laughs> no one does that except for drag queens, okay? It's kind of a... I mean, a- really, really, at this point, what's the difference? <laughs> Well, you know, if this whole radio host slash TV hosting doesn't work out for you, I can definitely get you a job in West You know what, though? I'm putting you on blast because when they were doing all the, and you said this before the show, when they were doing all the face app things where they were making men the women, you said I was the prettiest. You were the prettiest. When they, so, so someone put up all of the, in the, in the Facebook chat, all the different people in the schmodown that they had edited to the opposite gender version of themselves. And I ended up looking like the guy that hosts Catfish, and I was deeply offended. <laughs> I was deeply offended. And I was like, whatever, uh, whatever. But I, but I kept scrolling, and uh, I noticed that you were an incredibly attractive woman. So part of me thinks that if you really would have committed to this bit, and you would have shaved the facial hair and done a, maybe a little bit of contouring, maybe some eyelashes. We would have had, I mean, a hard time telling the two of us apart, to be honest. <laughs> well, you know what? What I feel like we should do <laughs> is when pandemic times are over. I will totally um, give you the full Jessica makeover. Yes, and I will do it because I'm actually kind of, I'm, I'm digging this a little bit. I'm playing with <laughs> hair. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll hang on to the wig and, the, and I'll bring this for you as well. And and you can give oh me the God. full the full the full makeover. I cannot um, wait. Yeah, this is the best that a man can do at this point. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as with everything else, we we don't do it as well as the ladies. Um, okay, let's get to our. This is what I think we should do. I think we should get to our love it or leave it. 
And then we have we do have a special guest. So I think we should bring this special guest on because he's been waiting in the wings for a long time. So we'll go to a break, and then we're going to move that movers and shakers after JTE just because we've gone on long enough. But love it or leave it, Jennifer Sturger. Um, Mark Hoyk was phenomenal in the horror free-for-all, and it left a lot of people wondering, could this be a secret weapon for the upcoming draft after what we saw happen? So I want to ask you right now, do you buy it or sell it? Do you love it or leave it that Mark Hoyt could be a secret weapon? I I don't. I'm sorry. Here's the thing. I'm just, mm, listen, my whole issue with this is, is drafting players that just have two specific of a genre to themselves. Like when you have players that are really one dimensional and they can only help you when they get certain things, that gives me a bit of a pause. If I was a manager, I'm looking at the player that's going to give me the most points across the board. So I'm looking honestly for players that are potentially good singles players that are good team players and actual bonus. If they happen to also be good at either star Wars or inner geekdom, those players that can really carry over like a chance Ellison, just for throwing that out there. Like I'm much more apt to go after those players and, and want to keep those players because those are the ones that are going to net me the most points. Keeping somebody just to give you a couple points in, in a novelty match, it just doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. I know, but everybody has their secret weapon. <laughs> do you know what EA I mean? Coria Coffetta donated $20. This has to Thank be the too. most ridiculous shit I've ever seen and I am 100 here for it. Jake, you're a smart man. Um, sorry, Mark Hoyk. <laughs> this show's off the rails. Mark Hoyk, um, I think I think that I would love it. I think that he could be. You want that sniper specialist sometimes. And if we do a horror tournament next year, if we do another horror free-for-all, and there's still talk of a potential horror division, right? If we do all of that, you're going to want a player who can play the game in, as far as horror, horror, horror and mark hoik would be that guy pld i'm not wrong on this am i i don't think so i actually kind of like the idea because mark has always shown himself to be a pretty talented individual as it is with everything but now that he has that killer uh killer category you can be quite impressive he gets more shots i, I think it could be a good seeker weapon especially because he might be underrated Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mark. Yeah. I, I think so. I think that he's going to go low in the draft so that he would actually be one of those steals. And thank you. He's a Chad good pickup. He's a good pickup in a later round. But that's like <laughs> the I see taking him early. Like you said, it's kind of like if you play fantasy football, it's that guy that like takes a pick up a, a kicker in the first round. You're just like, what are you doing? You know, a, a good pickup later on could actually be how you would describe me right now. <laughs> Not sure good pickup is the one I use. <laughs> I just choked. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. I, uh, by you the mean way, later on when the lights are off. <laughs> yeah. When it gets too late and you're like, well, I'm not going home empty handed. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Losing time. Right. Right. When you start to do that parking lot pimping, RB3 does what I'm talking about. We start doing that parking lot pimp, and you say, oh, you know what? It's, it's got to be it's this or nothing. Um, Girl, you don't oh. need to call an Uber. I'll take you home. <laughs> closing hour, closing hour time. Let's go, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, real quick, before we take a quick break, and then we get this show back on the rails, thank you for the chat for correcting me. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't JTE who said Chaswick Bosman. It was Finstock who I think probably has the better mispronunciations. JT probably has the better misspellings in my imagination. But um, let's see. Geppetto, have, yeah. Look, yes, this is what I said. It says Marlon Big Blank Brando says, Brad looks like Jay and Silent Bob is one person. <laughs> <laughs> These are all hilarious. I might have to dress like this for the entire Guys, the show. Guys, keep roasting Brad. Feel free to interrupt the show with Schmobot. Just keep roasting him away. I'm really enjoying this. And uh, like I said, I'll make good on my end of this bargain as well. Stick around later in the show. Yeah, Go speaking of... donated $20. First, I love all of this. Second, <laughs> who are the Star Wars and Dig Champs Gen 1 2021? Hi, Jen. Oh, okay. We're going to answer that question coming up next. And speaking of dudes who dress well as women, we have Brett Sheridan joining us. As well. <laughs> this is coming up next. We'll be right back. Oh, 
Hello. I was just putting away my Halloween decorations. Ah. My name is William Bibiani. Everyone calls me Bibbs, but here at the Schmodown, people call me the Beast. They also call me the current team's champion, because I got this, and it's pretty heavy, and I like it. But what I didn't like was not being part of the horror free-for-all. I couldn't make it for reasons which were not adequately explained to me. But that's not important right now. What's important right now is that we had a wonderful match that celebrated everyone's love of horror. I want to congratulate everyone who played, and I want to give a special message of congratulations to Adam Collins. Adam, you did great. You did so great that I want to challenge you, not to an Iron Man match, but to, because it's horror, an Iron Maiden match. You and me, nothing but horror questions, anytime, any place, except for the COVID thing. But other than that, any place next year. And I don't want to wait till Halloween. I eagerly await your response. Ow, my pumpkin! You are so feeling yourself now. <laughs> Definitely not. Welcome back to Coming Up Next. I am the Bo Brad Gilmore, joined by Jen Sturger, and we have a special guest. You saw him last week in his old Halloween photo dressed as Dolly Parton. This week, I guess I am both Sonny and Cher. He joins us now, <laughs> Brett Sheridan. Brett, how you doing? Good, good. So so you, you, you didn't know it was me. You didn't know that I was... You no, know, we didn't. <laughs> we couldn't figure that out. Can you tell us the story? We didn't. Why were you dressed as Dolly Parton? Um, well, she was all the rage at that time. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Jolene. Um, I think she was the only woman with large breasts at that time, apparently, because that was all they ever talked about with Dolly. But uh, right. yeah, I don't know. It just it was a choice. And I, I feel made like it. you had two choices. You could have gone Elvira or Dolly mm. Parton. Yeah, you chose the lighter of the two in terms of uh, personality and bubbliness, you know? It might have been a wig choice, too, that I had available, oh, but yes. yeah, I was, and yeah, that I don't think my son would do something like that at his age. I was pretty, you know, I didn't really care. I, I dressed up as anything. It was fun. I loved Halloween. I've always loved it. As the man what? that we've come to expect being so many different characters <laughs> in the Schmo universe, how is Brad doing for his first <laughs> shot at this? I love it. I love it. I was I had you on and it, yeah. I, I love how you're like, oh, you're feeling it now. You're feeling yeah. it. <laughs> the 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 thing, the wig is the toughest thing. That it gets so hot. It's very gotta, warm. A beanie very on it warm. too. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very warm right now. But Brett, we have you here for a specific purpose and specific reason. It has been announced that you will be participating in your very first Schmodown Spectacular, and you have Oof. quite the opponent. Uh, it is named by, I guess, my cosplay right now of Kevin Smith, <laughs> right? Uh, of uh, Silent Bob himself will be your opponent. First off, when you got the news, how did you feel about this? I, I felt like, wow, there's going to be a lot of people who are mad that I get to play Kevin Smith. <laughs> and Look, there probably... were a lot of people gunning for this. I have a feeling that when Kevin Smith was announced that he wanted a match at Spectacular, it's like everyone and their brother was like, I volunteer as tribute. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, that I could feel that. And I could, I, I'm sure there was a lot of, you know, oh, Christian's old buddy gets this because of you know, but I think um, I mean isn't it a rankings thing too I mean I I, I still you are am know, undefeated right? you know, yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing in preparation because your match that you played earlier this year was against Bonnie Somerville you had, you had some pretty uh some pretty glaring misses in the first round but you yeah. were able to pull it off uh what have you been doing in preparation for this match now that you have uh, now several weeks at this point to prepare um, I just kind of pay attention more, you know, to uh, <laughs> like, you know, when I look up something like when we talk about uh, something on SCN, I'll look up and I'll, I'll, I'll look up the director so I can kind of be more in tune with it. Um, I've learned some little tricks on, you know, uh, 
pulling out, you know, composers like, you know, your, your John Williams is a good one when you don't know of a composer, you can pull <laughs> that one out, you know, uh, especially with Spielberg films, I guess. So, you right. know, there's little tricks that uh, Ben Bateman gave me some you know, tricks and stuff. But, um, yeah, I don't know how much preparation a, a guy uh, with my memory can do at this point. <laughs> All this stuff kind of has gone out of my head after years of, you know, having to you know, keep children alive and and, and and feed them and and remember their blood types and things like that. Yeah, so. <laughs> so you're now, going the Stacey Howard method with this preparation is what you're telling. Yeah, her. I mean, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to have fun. I, 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 I am nervous. I mean, this is, uh, I'd be nervous though, no matter who I play, because I just don't want to look silly. And, and that sounds odd because I look silly every day of, on the show, but I just, I don't, yeah, people can be mean in this thing. And that's why Christian didn't let me compete uh, <laughs> back in the day. He said, he goes, when I, early on when we were doing Collider and uh, Schmoes, no, he's like, no, they, they'd tear you apart. And I don't think that you could handle it. You need to, I needed to learn about tr trolls and learn about, because this world was new to me and I didn't right. realize how mean people could be. <laughs> people suck uh, yeah. overall. <laughs> overall, yeah. I think that's safe to, <laughs> safe to say. Um, um, now, okay. When you saw Jericho versus Smith, did you feel, did you play along? Do you feel like you yes. did better? I think I did quite well. I think, I, I don't know, you know, I didn't really go, oh yeah, I, I, I didn't write it down or anything, but I was like, I, I had a lot of these, I had a lot of these right. I had, it, it was, but it's, it was, it's, it's like that thing when you're, you know, I, I watch Jeopardy and I can slam through and get a bunch of questions. But when I want to, if I were on the show, it'd be negative a hundred thousand. I mean, it would just be. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of, one of the things though in that match that that Jericho complained about afterward was the fact that Kevin Smith movies were on the wheel mm -hmm. in a match where Kevin Smith was also a competitor. How do you feel about the fact that he could go with Kevin Smith movies? <laughs> Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I feel like you guys are mocking me right now. No, I'm mocking him. That was not okay. you. Because okay. I don't see you doing that. I don't see you flipping I don't. Your... I don't. Yeah. She's a very... I would, I would never... Jen picked me up very early in the morning and took Please me to the tell this story. airport. <laughs> Barely knew me. We were partying in somebody's room with a, uh, after what was that? That was in uh, Houston. Oh, and yes. I'm like, oh man, I got an Uber to the airport. And you were even staying at a different hotel. I was, but you were Barely on the way. Me. And so I was like, you know what? I'm like, we're family now. I got this. I'll come pick you up in the morning. Yeah, that um, didn't have to I do it. I think <laughs> I was the only one of the two of us that like went back to their hotel and slept. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't sleep much that night. So I, uh, but I did manage. I think. I think I took a nice little shower for you so that you didn't have oh, the yeah. stinky <laughs> man. I didn't. Oh, okay. Never mind. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a different day. Maybe it was just my natural musk. <laughs> Your my natural musk smells my like Coors alcohol. Musk. <laughs> <laughs> but but with with Kevin Smith movies on potentially on the wheel this time yeah. around. Um, I mean, you would. You, I mean, with the, in, it was in the Jericho match. You would think that he probably would do it again. It was a smart strategy for mm -hmm. him. Jericho ended up getting it, although he did mm -hmm. well. Um, it still may have swung the, the the match for Kevin Smith's favor. So, Jen, why don't why don't we we tell Brett what what we have planned for him? So, Brett, we wanted to help you out. We wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an edge uh, when it comes to facing Kevin Smith. So, we actually came up with some Kevin Smith questions for you. So my first first run at this and you're yes <laughs> okay. we are going to help you study right now brad you want to give him the first question all right here you go you're gonna have Jessica? three questions <laughs> in the world of kevin smith trivia okay. you can go to multiple choice and you have one repeat we will begin to count you down as your time begins to run out this part. are you ready yes all right question number one who has played characters such as brody banky Azrael and Lance in Kevin Smith films. Jason Lee. That is correct for one point, or for two points rather. That is correct for two oh, points. I have to do this, right? <laughs> uh, Jen, do you want to take question two or you want me to? Oh, all right, let's do it. Question two. Which horror franchise does Jay and Silent Bob make a cameo appearance in? Ooh. 
Oh. Which one? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say scream. And that is correct. Brett Sheridan <laughs> is two for two so far, and I'm actually thoroughly impressed. <laughs> as we get to our final question, in the world of Kevin Smith trivia, comic legend George Carlin appeared in three different Kevin Smith films. Which one was the most recent? Most recent. And remember, you do have multiple choice. Um. Well, I know, I know, I can say ones he's in to think it out loud, or I shouldn't do that. Sure, yeah, do whatever. Well, you I know he's in work. Jersey Girl, mm-hmm. and I know he was in Dogma, I believe. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. With Jersey Girl was the most recent. That's your final answer. Yeah. And you're correct, Brett Sheraton goes perfect in Kevin Smith trivia. You can tell he's been doing his studying, or he is just that damn good. Congratulations, Brett. I'm actually surprised. I, I'm pretty I'm pleasantly surprised that you pulled that off. I didn't know the answers to any of those. That's all. Oh, I I'm surprised too. And I did you know, I mean I I I have seen these things. It was a long time ago. I haven't revisited it, so that's wow. I how did I do that? I, I wasn't <laughs> cheating, I swear. There's nothing on my... It's just you guys. Oh, man. I, I thought I might... I almost didn't go with Jersey Girl, though. I almost uh, went with Dogma, but I pulled it out. Can can we make sure they ask those same questions in my match? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's up to PJ, not us. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> oh, now but I know those luck. won't be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, Brett, we look forward to your match. Is that all that we have? Is that all the time we have with Brett, Jen? Um, I thought we had something else to do, didn't we? P- PLD, do we have something else that we were going to do? Yeah, Uh-oh. we do, Brett. I believe we uh, discussed it briefly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to make the... I didn't know who, if I was going to make it, but I have questions about Brett Sheridan because, you know, if, if Kevin Smith should have a wheel, I should have a, a wheel slice about myself so i have some wait excuse um, me you think <laughs> you think you need a wheel slice yeah yeah but definitely. you haven't made any movies i i've seen some so i think that's enough <laughs> you know and uh i i've uh, i've wanted to be in film uh most of my acting career so i think i should have a slice um of just basic you know uh uh you know, trivial information about myself. <laughs> oh, so these are just questions about questions about me. Yeah. Are we getting I asked these in. questions right now? Oh, yes, okay. Yes. Okay. Let's stop. I mean, because I know, I know you. I know you watch SCN live all the time, and right. you've been following my 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 schmo's career for so long. I'm sure you know a lot about me. Um, oh God. So I'm trying to think if I should. Uh, I'll, I'll lob. I'll lob the first one in. Possibly, what state um, did I grow up in? Okay, Jen. Okay, mm. what state did Brett Sheridan grow up in? He I feel like he's got East Midwestern Coast. Chart. Oh, oh, I was going East Coast, but you're right. There might be a chart. Midwestern thing, like a, like a, like a Nebraska. Are you like? If you stand up, like, are you like, like, are you, what, how's your body build? I don't remember. Is it like a, <laughs> like a, a well-fed, like meat and potatoes kind of kid? Man, Yeah, Bob. look he looks, at those. He looks jacked. He looks jacked. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with like Nebraska. I, I, you know what? I agree. Nebraska, final answer. You got it. What? Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska. Hey. There's a lot of Midwest places out there. I was there. completely was- <laughs> guessing. I was between that and Massachusetts, but I, I was, was like, say the Illinois, is not quite there. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. All okay, right. what do we got next? We're one okay. for one. Okay, okay. Right. Do I make it harder? Okay, um... No, because I was a pure guess. I have I have only one family member that watches me on SCN Live and watches consistently. No one else, I ha- I have a one friend and one family member that watch, but nobody else in my family watches me on SEN. Who is that family member? Okay, Jen, I, I feel co- somewhat confident, like 70%, it's his mother. Because I feel like one time they did a bit that was highly questionable and he said something like, my mother's gonna hear this or something. I think it's his mom, what do you think? Huh. I feel like that's an obvious answer. Too. I feel like you're right. Yeah. Because there's no way he's letting his kids watch SCN. 
you know? No. Not his with wife. them doing WAP lyrics and stuff. <laughs> and I'm not sure if his wife would still be with him if she watched SCN. If the flow was watching this right now, she wouldn't stay with me. So we're going to go, <laughs> go with, his mom. with Brett's mother. Right That's on. Right. Yes! Right on. Yes! Never misses a show. Never Sometimes misses I, an I, I hope, you know, I'm like, maybe today she won't. But she'll go back and get that replay even when RB3 does wop so <laughs> <laughs> all right this one let's see i got i gotta make it hard i think give us some horn um okay so i met christian doing stand-up um back in the day in the late 90s at what club oh, what comedy club? store you think it's comedy store i think it's the comedy store was christian always at the store or was he at like what's the other one left? Laugh, I feel laughter? like he's more of a store guy. He is a store now. I know for a fact Christian Harloff's name is on the side of the comedy and store. It's got to be the store, dude. It's written on the side of the store. He pointed it out to me. Now it isn't a place where no one will ever see it, but it is on the side of the store. <laughs> it's bathroom back door entrance. Yes, oh the back back door entrance to the bathroom in the back room. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I I. I, I we we're okay. gonna get such a stern talking to after this. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Comedy store. Comedy store is incorrect. What? Oh, Jed, I knew it. Yeah, Where was it? It was, it was called Luna Park. Oh, um, we've talked oh. about it. You know, I, we haven't talked oh, about it much. Oh, this was the club the... that Christian worked at, right? Yes, yes. He was he was a bartender. I ran camera and sold VHS copies of people's sets <laughs> to them. Um, Out yeah, of the we're... back of your car, I'm sure. Yeah. In the oh yeah, lot. totally. I had didn't I, some I, actress like flash him or something at this club, or there was something like that. The, oh yeah, I think uh, what from uh, um, from the girl from Bring, Bring it, on. it On. Yeah. Oh, not see, not a uh, Kirsten Dunst, but the other one. Yes, yes. Oh M man, Missy's the poo. So take a big whiff. That's I'm, 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 I'm that glad. Line. I'm glad this wasn't a question I, I had. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I think. That, do we have any more? Did we go three for I, three? You went three. You could. That, you could do that. I, I don't think I have anything else. That you went two for. Three. I have. I have two very. Here's a very very obscure count. one. Maybe I'll just throw out okay, for fun. Let's do it. Um, roughly for about two to three years now, I have been been able to um through lack of uh tweeting maintain about the same amount of followers um <laughs> i will give you within the i'd even say thousand range you know give or take a thousand here and there how many that would be okay now i think i follow brett on twitter i think um now he's been on sen now for like a year they've been doing sen I yeah. have to thank Jen that it grows um, with You would time. think. <laughs> <laughs> the levels of shade. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 3,000. Th 3, really? That's it? I was going to say oh, it's more I? in like the, the 8 to 10 range. 8 to 10? I'm going 3, so we're going to split the, we're going to split this one. So, Brett, where are you? Currently, I am at seven thousand five hundred and twenty-six. Oh, wow! Damn. And I have so not close. veered from that in either direction more than twenty or thirty for probably two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I even had a bet with like Darina back on the show, first one to ten thousand. I don't know. I'm just I'm bad at social media, and it's something that I I guess is something you're supposed to do in this. Uh, this world of ours is, is is promote yourself and get that Some stuff people out say there. So. Yeah, some people <laughs> say that might be important, but I guarantee you we are going to get Brett Sheridan over yes, 10,000 followers yes. after the spectacular because he's playing Kevin Smith, a man with millions of followers around the world who love and adore him. I have a feeling that Brett's going to be the favorite. Brett Sheridan, we appreciate you so much for joining us on Coming Up Next. Thank you, good sir, Thank and good you. luck at the spectacular. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be back, hopefully with more coming up next. And it is Kubrick. All right, Adam, you can get four questions in the realm of Kubrick films. Here it is. First one. What room does Dick Halloran tell Danny to stay away from in The Shining? Room 237. Correct for two points. In The Killing, 
Johnny Clay is a career criminal that plans to steal from the mount from the money counting room of racetrack of a racetrack during a featured race. How much money does he estimate will be stolen? Two million dollars. Correct for two points. In Paths of Glory, what is the rank of Kirk Douglas's Dax? He is a colonel. Correct for two more points. Final question. What was the last film to give Stanley Kubrick a Best Director Oscar nomination? Barry Lyndon. Two more points. Adam Collins clears the board there. Amazing Woo! round by Adam Collins. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. All right, here is the spin, and we're looking at... It is right on the line, so it's spy movies. Spy movies. How do you call that spy? It's on the so line. Anything that on happens the on the line, they go to the right. That's their it's new the rule. Right. It happened recently. So how are you feeling about spy movies? Let's 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 respin. Yeah. All right, spin again. All right, here it is. May luck be on our side more so than Mike Kalinowski's wiener. Sorry to the editors who are probably going to have to cut that out. Why? It's family friendly. It starts families. And Tyler Perry. Tyler Great. Perry. That's correct. Uh, Jeff, four questions. Like Christian said, two points apiece. Unless you want to go to multiple choice. In the world of Tyler Perry, who despite his last name is not related to the Aerosmith guitarist. For two points. The first question. Tyler Perry appears in what thriller from director David Fincher? Gone Girl. Two points for Jeff Snyder. All right, two points. Next one. All right, here we go. For two more points. Jeff, which actress stars as the adult version of Melinda Gale in the 2018 Tyler Perry film Acrimony, a thriller about a wronged wife? Is it Taraji P. Henson? Need a final answer? Yes. It is Taraji P. Henson for two more points. Big points here from Jeff. Here's question number three. That's right. And we move on to your penultimate question in the world of Mr. Perry. Tyler Perry directed what 2013 Christmas movie which stars his signature character? Oh, I'm forgetting if there's this word in it. Five, four, three. A Medea Christmas. Christian, Jeff's perfect in this round so far. Oh, All right, here. God. I don't here. know if it's a Medea family Christmas or what. In order, oh, to, in order to get himself within one, he's got to hit this final question. Here it is. All right. Tyler Perry appears as Admiral Richard Barnett in what science fiction franchise? Just the franchise, not the title. Uh, Admiral. Five, four, three, two. Star Trek. Jeff Snyder has a perfect round two and is within one of the Coyotes' lead. What a round there by Jeff Snyder as we get ourselves now to round I, I number I have never wanted three. to grab your face and make out with it harder. What oh. a round! That is the absolute what worst case round. scenario for everybody, everybody watching. in that TKO position yep. where Sean Sullivan in his very first day, this is his first debut of any kind of the movie trivia showdown, yep. could score himself a technical knockout, but standing in his way is Adam Witt and a question that he selected, the number two for five points and the lead. Adam, your category is episode one, The Phantom Menace. Lucky me. <laughs> did you camp out for tickets for The Phantom Menace? I did. So did I. Me too. It's a good time. It was, it good. was the last time you could do that. Yeah, it's true. Everything was, everything was on the internet after that. That is right. Your question. In episode one, what is the name of the Nemoidian captain of the Trade Federation droid control ship? It's the one that Sidious 
quotes, didn't want in his sight again. Oh. Go to five. Repeat the question. <laughs> you can do that. It's JT rule. First one. In episode one, what is the name of the Nemoidian captain of the Trade Federation droid control ship? The one that Sidious, quotes, didn't want in his sight again. Five, four, three. Read the question. Second JTE rule. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, what is the name of the Mo what is the name of the Nemoidian captain of the Trade Federation droid control ship? The one that Sidious quoted didn't want in his sight again. So it's got one JT rule remaining, Rachel. Yep. Fifteen more seconds. Seems like he might need it. It's a tough, tough five point. Five. Four. Dolte Dauphine. It's a tough five-pointer, and he got it right. Wow. Well done. And that warrants a handshake from his competitor, the Saint. Yeah. A hug from Kaiser. I love it. Game recognized wow. game. That's a deep, deep pull. He needed all Milk in the camera. to get there, but he This got is there. why I do this. Using them. Milk in the camera. And, I mean, good. even Sean has to smile at yeah. that pull. It's going to be a good question. Uh, for w Win or lose, it's going to be a fun question for Jen Sturcher talking to Adam. Did he know that right off the bat? Or was he building drama? Or did he really take the 45 seconds to conjure that? We'll find that out in the post game. But yep. for right now, we have a match to set. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Coming Up Next. I am the boat, Brad Gilmore, and I am back. Jessica is gone. But I, you know what? I did really enjoy myself more than, <laughs> more than I thought that I would. Um, as you can see, Miss Jennifer Sturger is off camera currently because if you remember our, our bet or our, our um, agreement, if we hit a certain threshold with the Schmobot, we would both be one another. I have fulfilled my end of the bargain begrudgingly to the enjoyment of the masses out there. You enjoyed it. You enjoyed I, it. I began to. I'll be honest with you. I began to uh, as time went on. But Jen Sturger, it's time for you to reveal yourself as the boat. Now, guys, I haven't seen it. No one has seen it. So we're going to see what a makeshift boat this is Looks messed like. up. This is messed up, though, because you, the only reason we reached that level and look, people brought it right up to it because they wanted to tease you. No one anticipated you putting your own money in, you cheater. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did do that. That's right. I put I got us over the edge. You're I like, got us oh, the I edge. am a douche. I did do that to you, Jen. <laughs> so now, without further ado, let us please see the Sturge version of the boat. Can I get a drum roll or something so we have it a... feels like it's worth it? There we go. This is the best Ready? I got. This is the best I got. Three, two. <laughs> <laughs> the staggered facial hair. The piled high do. <laughs> oh my gosh. You I'm look. I'm feeling myself right now. <laughs> Bring the mic it. close to you. <laughs> the cleavage is really where it's at, right? Yeah, that's the that's the picture everyone wants. To, they want to picture me with cleavage. That's what they, that's what they all want. You kind of look like Rachel Maddow. I'm be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is so confused. <laughs> Kevin, what? Kevin, is this confusing? <laughs> so there it is. We're gonna finish this show with Miss Jennifer Sturger as the. Oh. I'm gonna refer to you as the boat well, right let's now. Let's be clear. This is impromptu. I did this in a short commercial break. If I had actually applied <laughs> myself and like gotten the actual fake facial, I enjoy doing dress up, but I've never dressed as a I man can't. before. I really feel like I've got some some big D energy going right now, right? Oh. <laughs> you look absolutely sensationally ridiculous. <laughs> See, now you're feeling yourself a little bit. Everyone um, screen grab this, ready? There it is. 
There it is. We got to move into our, our, our final <laughs> two segments of the show. Let's go into movers and shakers. This week, we're going to talk about swag. What movers and shakers <laughs> is, we know we have an upcoming draft. The end of the season is upon us. And so we want to select, Jen and I, we want to talk about a faction each and every week or every other week about, and we want to see who we would select from that team to keep. Because remember, the managers can only retain three of the players they currently have. They don't have to retain all three. They can say, I just want one or two and offer that free agency contract, right? But we would like to look, think about who we, we, we would keep. And this week, it is swag. Schmodown winning in greatness. Although the team has overperformed, the team name has underperformed. I do like swag, though. So let's talk about the three members from swag that we might keep. Jennifer Sturger, the floor, or excuse me, Boat, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So... This is going to come as a shock to everyone. Yes. Will you stop it? <coughs> yeah. Take me. I just you know, want to be taken seriously in you know this what? league. Damn it. You have surpassed Mr. Brendan Meyer. <laughs> and I think feel like you're now the fine young tenderoni. But let me hear you say it the way I do. You know, the chat wants the you to hear it. Fine you. young tenderoni. How do you, no, you do it? Tender. You got to. Tenderoni. <laughs> Wait, play the music. Play the music. <laughs> All right. Here, and the music is now. Give us some Roni, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Which which tree would you... I have which, to have... Please, someone remind me on Twitter to wash my face before I go out. Um, it doesn't really matter because I'll have a mask on. But, like, if my neighbors see me no, walk out like this to wash the dog... You should straight up just leave the mask on. And then if you have to take it off for any reason... Uh, if you guys, if you guys Venmo me twenty dollars, I'll send you guys some um, some cameos like this. <laughs> I will cut you a cameo as the boat, Brad Gilmore. <laughs> oh, this oh is so God. ridiculous! This is ridiculous. Uh, so, so back to the question is whether or not you know who we would keep on swag, and I just I keep going back to I know I am one of the hardest critics mm -hmm. of Chandra. Yes, you are. I just am. I, I don't I don't necessarily like his attitude. I uh Right. He's a lot. <laughs> she looks like a pre CGI extra from cats. <laughs> he's a lot, okay? <laughs> but in this case, I feel like he's done so much for Winston this season in terms of elevating swag that he's gotta keep him, no? <laughs> yes, he's gotta keep Chandru. Chandru beat Kevin Smets. That's massive. That is massive. We thought that Kevin Smith was going to be unbeatable. He beat Kevin Smith. So I keep Chandru. And then I know that you've had an up and down turbulent relationship as well with Paulo Yama, right? No, but here's the thing. I've turned a corner on Paulo Yama. And I think that he definitely, I think that swag is going to very much trend on the rookies in terms of who you keep this next mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep Paulo Yama. I really, really do. Uh, I think that he's one of those multifaceted players that I think can apply himself and get you points on the board in multiple uh, divisions. And that's the kind of players, like I said, that I personally, if I was a manager, I'd want to keep. I cannot, I, I can't look at myself. <laughs> but if I'm looking at his teammate, Juan Harris, as much as I want to keep Juan Harris, I might have some hesitations and I might actually be looking to someone like a Liz Shannon Miller. Okay, you know, you know what? That's interesting. I see your I see your logic. Now they both took L's to Adam Collins in the singles tournament, but Lon and Paul have worked really well together. However, I am only keeping Chandru and Paul from this list. Now I know RB3, I love you, my man. Andres Cabrera, I'm a big fan of. Liz Shannon Miller, I'm a big fan of, and Lon Harris. However, I think the big free agency coup that you need to make room for on your team, if you're any manager. You need to at least make room for Ben the Boss Bateman. We mm. are pretty confident he will not be with the Finstock Exchange next season. And if you put Ben Bateman and Paulo Yama together, that is a phenomenal team. I love final exam, but this is this is much. She's adding the soul patch, ladies and gentlemen. It the is. boat is adding the I soul patch. I fucked up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's all right. Um, she screwed up. But it, <laughs> this is so funny. I would <laughs> keep girl. Ben Bateman. Pa Paul. Paul. PLD, Paul Denuzio, what do you think about my idea of, of Paulo Yama, Chandru, and Ben Bateman as Swag's main three next year? 
I, I got to tell you, I, I dig it. I dig it. That's the way I was thinking as well. I do love Liz Shannon Miller a lot, but you got to keep Chandru as an intergeekdom, like top tier intergeekdom player. But Ben Bateman's going to be a person that's going to be in high demand. And if you can get that kind of person on your team, you can team him up with anybody. He can lead your team in the singles. I think you got to go with Bateman. God, he'd be so good. Like that would be honestly a dream scenario with, uh, with Paulo Yama. It truly would. Yeah, it would be great. It'd be great. You agree, RB3? Okay. <clears throat> now this might uh-huh. get me potentially in trouble as someone, you know, uh, on swag currently. So I'm not saying this is a position of somebody who has talked to Winston about this or anything like that. You know, this is merely me, you know, saying, you know, my opinion, you know what I mean? And hey, who knows what that's going to lead up to. Right. But, you know, Ben Bateman, he, he's, he's a real, you know, he's a real character when it comes to, the amount of, you know, effort and attention that you need to put towards them. And, you know, swag, we're a real friendly bunch. You know what I mean? We're a real friendly, you know, very kind of, uh, you know, we, we work in harmony, work very well together. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you and saying that he's like a Carmelo? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. And, you know, a lot of times great teams need that X factor. Teams need that, that Mamba mentality. You know what I mean? I totally get that. But, you know, at the same time, um, you know, at the same time, though, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we have a good vibe. So I, I, I kind of make it seem like he might be a little diva ish. No, that kind I mean, of the vibe. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, uh-oh, I work with Ben. No, no, no. I work with Ben Bateman on the Schmodown Rundown. Great dude. He's always, um, always great. Always great to work with. Um, I'm not saying he's a diva, you know, at, at all. I, what I'm saying is, you know, the swag vibe right now. And, you know, we see it through the players, right? Very much the underdog flavor, right? Very much the the rookies. Andres Cabrera, surprise. Um, Chandru surprised a lot of people. Liz Shannon Miller surprised a lot of people. You know, we're for the more more of the surprises. You know, the established talent. Not every team needs an established talent to to succeed. That 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 would be my only thing. So I could I hear what y'all are saying, but you know, okay. Okay, interesting, interesting words there from an influential member of Swag. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at the way this is gonna get twisted, Winston. Don't, Winston, don't take this out of context. Don't take, anybody, don't take this out of context. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're coming across like the general manager, or the president yeah. of, of Schmodown Operations over there for Swag. So I would take what RB3 says. It's a pretty solid source right there. That Ben Bateman might might not be a target for them in this free agency. We will see. We will see boat we, we will see so i want to read a couple comments real quick before we move on of someone said it, it was my uh uh she's got the hair someone said my body is confused right now <laughs> it's the cleavage bro it'll, it'll mess with anybody uh you got to play the dream boat sound so let me do that for you real quick jen oh my god you're my dream boat for sure <laughs> that's, that's, that's Damn, Jen's still fine as Brad. <laughs> Let's see. What else we got? Jen always bettering herself. That's why we That's love That's why I her. added the soul patch. I just feel like I was missing a little something in the equation. I feel yeah, like this really. A little soul patch. You know, look, look at you. Look at you. This is ridiculous. Don't do that tongue thing. That's mildly or, or majorly uh, off-putting. Brad uh-uh. is like, I never thought I'd find myself so attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's get to our, let's get to our final segment. Before we do, oh. before we get to our final segment. Um, thank you to everyone who's who's donated via Streamlabs already. We weren't even asking you for them, and you brought them in anyway. I know that we had a question there. We're going to get to that here in just feel a second. Feel free to question. send in some to tell me how pretty I am, guys. I feel like we should have some, some you know, co- compliments. I got a lot. I got a lot of compliments. You know, I'm a big draw on this show. Big, big draw. Um, we got to have Jen at slash boat get some, uh, <laughs> get some love here as well. And if you want to see Jen Sturger, a.k.a. the boat currently. If you want to see her eat the one chip challenge and be a 2020 oh. champion, I think we're about $100 shy of that goal currently. And I've decided I would do it with you, Jen. I would do it with you. And, I, and I'd and i add a little kick to it. For those fans of hot ones, you know the hot sauce, the bomb beyond insanity. It is very spicy. It is uncontrollable. I will take the one chip challenge 
with a little de bomb hot sauce on it for you all's enjoyment. If we can get to, I think what what are we at RB3? 102, 104, something like that. So we need 98 to 96 dollars, somewhere in that range. And we will do the one chip challenge <laughs> next week. And uh, I will see Jen suffer because I know the pain. So I feel like I'm I'm ready for it. You know, I feel like I'm I'm ready for it. And I'm I would give people a preview if we got over 200. I would give people a preview because I actually have AJ some. AJ Lancaster donated $20. Brad Jen isn't the Gomez Adams we need. She's the Gomez Adams we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a raw Julia thing going on right now. Acquitted. <laughs> That's great. Well, Thank I, you. I, I do got to say, so with that $20 donation, we also have another uh, Streamlabs donation that we just got into. So we'll talk about that in a second. But we, that will put us at 127 So we are at 127 right now uh, for okay, so the go. Need, what is that? Is that 73 or 73 $73. $73. $73 to hit our goal. And Jin slash the boat is looking increasingly worried. Um, people are saying that that would destroy me in the chat. Some people are saying that I wish I had more money right now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it is time for our final segment um, that we are calling Bef Quick Picks. Before, oh, we, ahead, RB3. before we move on, we do have a question from Jeremiah Morris on the topic of swag. Oh. And, and by the way, people, send in your questions. Who do you think the, the, the swag through should be? Send that in streamlabs.com slash the schmodown. Um, Jeremiah Morris, Ben the Boss Bateman is the biggest diva. Don't ruin Oyama, which is one of my favorite players, teaming him with that diva. Oh, geez. A lot of hate in the in the in the world for Ben Bateman. I don't find him to be a diva. I find him to be a perfectionist. And perhaps those yeah. two can overlap at times. Um, but I find him to be a perfectionist and he just wants to get every single question correct. And um that could rub people wrong way. You know, you know who he you know who he is kind of like an RB3, you'll you'll get with me on this one. He is Chris Paul. Oh yeah. Uh, Mm, that's a good ben one. Ben Bateman is Chris Paul. He might not be the easiest person to play with, but he's really good at what he does. Mm -hmm. You know, they call Chris Paul the point god for a reason. One of the most, if not the greatest point guard in the history of the game. Even Sands championships, he definitely commands the respect on any team that he's on. He definitely brings that team to a higher level. Um, when he was on the Rockets, we won more games than any franchise. I mean, than, than any season in franchise history. OKC, they said they wouldn't even make the playoffs. He almost beat the Houston Rockets, his former team. They had to go to a game seven, and a James Harden defensive play is what saved it. I think Ben Bateman is the CP3 of the league. That's what I think, even though he's won a title. Um, but, yeah, did we have another question? Now, I know we had one come in earlier, RB3, and we'll get to that in our Streamlabs uh, segment after we do quick picks. So let's bring in Paul Denuzio right now for quick picks. And we're going to pick right now. We have a big uh, match coming up between the Odd Couple and Category 9, the debuting Category 9. Of course, Odd Couple, former team's champions. Jeff Snyder, one of the greatest team players of all time. So, Jen Sturger, let's get to it. Who do you have? Do you have the Odd Couple or do you have Category 9, which includes uh, Brandon Hanna, the hitman, and the Hurricane, Jada Paramo? Listen, I, I don't have anything against... Uh Hannah, I mean, I kind of do, uh, and Who Jader, does? and Jader, but I do think that there's something about the chemistry of the odd couple and just the fact that they're already a tested entity going into this tournament. So I, I feel very confident that Mark and Draco will be able to reel in Jeff Snyder. And look, Jeff Snyder was having a really good run in singles. I hope that he's able to take that momentum that he had pre facing Collins and Let's let's move it into teams, you know, let's regroup and let's move into teams and let's try to redeem ourselves a little bit. And I think Mark and Draco and uh, and Roxy are going to be able to calm him down a little bit and focus him and get him ready to be able to be the kind of teams player that we're used to seeing from the Snyder. Wow. Yeah, you made a lot of great points there, and I agree with the majority of them. I think that um, I think that I am picking the odd couple as well. Uh, they have been playing very well together. I mean, they they went on. I mean. Uh, who's the boss had to set the new team's points record to beat them earlier this season back, I think, in February or March, whenever that match went off. And um, they've been, Jeff Snyder's been in the snyder sons, as we said. So for that reason and for that reason alone, I am going to also pick the odd couple. Um, and they have the experience factor in their corner. Uh, PLD, who you got? I got to go odd couple, too. There's too many firsts. First time Jader's playing in teams. First time Brandon's playing in singles. Uh, a couple are a championship team. They've been, they've been team champions before. Uh, Brandon's going to be the X factor, though, because we don't know how he's going to play. 
But as far as I know, since he turned his back on a call to action, I can't have anything but disgust for him. So mm. go on, uh, couple. Mm. He's got a real disgusting face. You know what I mean? Like it's a very, very not like this. Putting. Not like this. Not not like the boat over here. Yes, I mean. He definitely boat couldn't call squared, boat the squared. Head. Boat squared over here is just <laughs> killing it. So what's up? Hey, ladies. <laughs> See now you're kind of feeling yourself in that in that odd in that odd how that goes. Um, you know, I just feel like if I had facial hair, I would not have to contour myself as much because this kind of just adds like a nice little you really, adds some it, shading it, to the it face. It accentuates your jawline. It, absolutely. That yeah. means why, why do you think that we do it? You know, we have to cover up what we have here. See, mm. men, men. There's the Jerry Seinfeld bit where like men are like jeeps. They're really mm. made just to get around. You know, no. they can look, they can look okay. Do you honk at each other when you pass each other too on the yeah. road? <laughs> yeah. Just, Hey, what's up? And then the, he said that women are like, um, like a Mercedes Benz, oh. you know, beautiful machine, very expensive body, parts, <laughs> very expensive parts, a lot of upkeep. You know what I mean? That was his, that was his old bit. So, and yeah. I think that we might have a, a, a newfound respect for that perspective after today, you and I, now we are $73 away from our hitting our goal of gin crying and perhaps having to visit a gastroenterologist from eating a spicy chip and me adding insanity on top of that one. If you can get to that $73 goal, that would be phenomenal. I know, RB3, that we had missed a stream lab earlier. We heard it, but um, it was a question, I believe, something about Star Wars Champion in 2021. Do you see that one? Uh, yes, I do. It says, um, oh, here we go. Wait, sorry about that. Here we go. Uh, first of all, and this is from uh, Go Nose. First, I love all of this. Second, who will be the Star Wars and IG champs come January 1st, 2021? Hi, Jen. Mm -hmm. Darth Obi-Wan donated $78. <laughs> ben in the game is a narcissistic pain in the rear while on backstage he's calm and demure. Jen looks as good as a man as Brad does as a woman. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but shout out to uh, who, who gave that one? Who was the one who Dar gave that one? Uh, Darth Orbit, I believe. Darth Orbit, thank you so much for Messed getting us up. over that $200 threshold. We Messed salute up. you, sir, and we will do this at the conclusion of next week's show. Darth oh, Obi-Wan. that is so funny. Okay, who do you think, though, uh, Darth Obi-Wan, who do you think um, will be in the, uh, <laughs> the IG and the... Uh, Whatever the other thing was, Star Wars champion in 2021. I think it's going to be, I think we're going to see two flips at the Spectacular. I'm going to two guess flips. Ace, Ace Cabrera will win the Star Wars championship. AJ Lancaster donated $20. Jada carries round one if Hanukkah pulls six points in one, navigate the hurricane in round two, and answer a two pints in round three, they pull the upset. Oh, wow. He thinks they're going to upset. I think that might be wishful thinking, my man. AJ, I, you know, I appreciate you. I'm a big fan of AJ Lancaster. Big, big fan of AJ Lancaster. Same. But I don't think that that's, I don't, th I don't see that happening. Now, it has been the season of upsets, right? Upset City is the nickname of this season, so it's qu quite possible. But going back to upsets, I do think Ace Cabrera flips and gets the Star Wars championship. I feel like I've been watching the election <laughs> for too long. It's going to flip this state. This state's going to flip for that. And I think that... Um, I think because there are primarily mail in questions that are going to come in because <laughs> we don't know what order they're counting them. I feel so bad for the dudes that are standing in front of these hypothetical maps literally for hours in business shoes, by the way. I hope they have like Dr. Scholl's inserts in there uh, because otherwise it's a disaster. Plus, they've got to do math in front of people for like hours on end. I like to, I, I'm not that great at math. So I need like a paper, a pen. I need to carry some ones and stuff. Oh, shout out to those guys. They've been working overtime. They're, but I do feel the same way where it's like, I feel like I've been watching this. I think that you're I'm a off. little, you're a little off here. Uh, your other self, Brad, uh, <laughs> your, your better side actually thinks that the Star Wars champion is just it's just such a lofty goal to try to overcome in this perspective uh, that I don't know that we will see a flip when it comes to the Star Wars championship. However, however, when it comes to inner geekdom, I think it's kind of a jump ball. I think that Chance Ellison has proven himself to be incredibly dangerous. And the fact that he's got a lot of time on his hands now, I really think that he's got a shot at knocking off Chandra. 
I do as well. That's why I think Chance Ellison's going to pull it off, and I think Ace Cabrera's going to pull it off. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I just I just feeling the, the vibe of the room. Because Chandra's been on ice for now so long, and so has Alex Damon, just waiting to see who, who's going to be the challenger. And, you know, time off is a competitor's worst enemy that goes for any sport, including the movie Trivia Schmodown. We will see, Boat. Uh, we'll see what ends up going on. RB3, did we miss any Streamlabs or Super Chats before we wrap this up? Uh, let me see here. We don't have any anything else on the stream labs i will check super chats real quick by the way people schmodown.com slash i'm sorry streamlabs.com slash the schmodown yes if you you have any last minute questions streamlabs.com slash the schmodown slash tip if you want to be completely accurate but definitely go there and get your last minute questions in this is the last time you might see the boat and the boat on the screen at the very same time so please get those in if you have any last parting comments for miss boat <laughs> for the boat for or for me uh, we'll i want to know who thinks uh, who has the better facial hair is it the boat or is it the boat <laughs> i don't know i mean pld would put puts me to a run for my money he's got like this this great east coast vibe going on with his facial hair so we shall see we shall see um, is that all though from Super Chat RB3? Uh, Super Chat, yeah, we, we already read them. We have um, um, awesome. uh, Mar- Marlon, um, Big Dick Brando, um, Brad looks like uh, Jay and Silent Bob in one person, and he came back again, and she looks like a pre CGI extra from Cats. So, yeah, that's all that uh, donations that we have today. All right. Well, we appreciate every single one this of you. This nuts, but we hope that we've provided you with a little bit of distraction with everything that's going on right now, guys. Yes, so. absolutely so. This has been a memorable edition, to say the very least, of coming up next. Episode 007. Want to give a big shout out to the legend, Mr. Sean Connery, who is no longer with us. Absolute legend. The greatest James Bond ever, and you cannot change my mind. But... I am the boat, Brad Gilmore. That is the boat, Jen Sturger. This is coming up next, and we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Fine, young, tenderoni.